Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is the second of my Python Bytes set of tutorials. In the previous one we looked at the matrix array and how we could use it to change the position of clones within a cloner. And on this occasion we're going back to the matrix array once again but this time we're going to be looking at rotation. And I'm going to show you two methods for rotating the clones within a cloner. That's what we're about here. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. To start this off, the first thing I need is a cylinder. I'm going to make it 20 in the radius, 5 in the height, give it a single height segment and 6 rotation segments. So it's a hexagonal shape. The next thing I'm going to bring in will be a cloner. So I'll bring one of those in and drop my cylinder into the cloner there. And we don't need a grid array. I'm going to be using a honeycomb array for this one. And I just need it to be five by five in terms of the clones and 32 by 38. And I also need to work a little bit with the plane here. What I want is the XZ plane. And that's great. So I've got my clones sorted out as I want them. The only other thing I'm going to do is go into the transform tab here, click on the color and just make them red. And then select index from the display. And that's great. So we've got our cloner set up with our clones. The only other thing I can do to make the clones perhaps a little bit more nice is just put a fillet on the caps and take that down to just a centimeter and that'll do nicely. Moving on from here, I'll select my cloner and then bring in a Python effector. And that's doing its job. As we can see, we'll switch to full control, switch to a scripting layout and then open the Python editor. As always, remove the loop and then hit execute to bring everything back to where it needs to be. Right, so what do we need to do then in order to move these clones and make them rotate? Well, the clone I'm gonna work with initially, well, in fact, I'm gonna work with all the way through really is clone six. That's why I've brought in the indexes. So I'm gonna work with the center clone here. Okay, so what we're going to do then is look at the first method for actually rotating the clones. So how do we go about this? Well, the first thing we need to do is define some variables. So if we say rotation underscore X is equal to, then what we can say is C4D dot utils, because the methods we're using here is found in the utilities module of Cinema 4D. We don't actually have to import that. Um, used to have to do that, but we don't now. We can just say it. We can just say c4d.utils without importing it. And then it's dot matrix rot, rot for rotation x brackets c4d.utils dot rad for radians brackets 45 double close that's our first variable this is going to control the rotation x of our clones okay so if we say ma bracket 6 multiplied by equals rot underscore x and hit execute we find that our centre clone has now rotated along its x-axis by 45 degrees. There you go. As you can see, x-axis is here and it's rotated along that axis. So if we wanted to rotate along the z or the y-axis or the y or the z, I suppose I should say in that order, all we need to do is copy this line of code paste it in there, change this to a Y and change this to a capital Y. We'll put 
30 degrees in there to make it a little bit more interesting. And then all I've got to do here is say rot Y, execute that, and you can see that it's rotated around its Y axis by 30 degrees. Finally, we'll just get the rot X again. We'll paste it in there. Rotation Z. Put a Z on there and execute that. And now you can see it's rotated by 45 degrees along its z-axis. And that's how you do rotation if you're working with a single axis. That's very important. These are good if that's all you need to do. But suppose you wanted to work with two or even three axes at exactly the same time. How would you do that? Well, we have to use a different method, and I'm going to show you that next. This is slightly more involved than the previous method. So first thing we need to do is define three new variables. So we'll say Rx is equal to c4d.utils.rad. And we'll say minus 11. You'll see why in a minute. Next thing is the y-axis. So R y is equal to and I'm just going to say zero here because we're not really going to be working with the the y-axis here or at least we don't need to actually change its value and then finally r underscore z is equal to and I might as well just copy this code here drop that in there and say 18. so that's our three vectors defined so we can say vect is equal to c4d dot vector brackets rx r y and r z so that's defined all of those now the next thing we need to do is something that's slightly different to what we've done previously up here we actually need to use an HBB to matrix that's how we achieve what we're going to do here before we do that though what we'll do is just take cinema 4d out of the way and I'll also take screen flow out of the way and then in my storage here I've got the Python developer kit so we'll just open this up. And here we are. We're in the Python developer kit here. And in utils here, we'll just click on that and open it up. And we'll come down and take a look at matrix to or HBB to matrix, which is here. So if we click on this, we can see what we've got here. So we need to give it an HBP, which is a vector, which is what we've just created. But we've also got an order, a rotational order that follows the, the vector. So what we need to use is the X, Y and Z global. Now, the way this works, the order you can see here, it's got brackets integer. So starting from zero, this is a list, but you start from zero. So zero, one, two, three, for five is going to be the number that we need to put we're going to need to put after the the, uh, the comma here so it'll be our vector comma five that's what we're going to be putting in there if you need to check out and see how things work always come into the SDK here there's not anywhere near enough sample code in my opinion in the in the developer kit. That's the one criticism I've got of it. It is very thorough, but there's not enough, not, not enough sample code. And you do have to play detective sometimes to find out how things work. But uh, but in, nonetheless, it's there. It's a tool that you can use. It's something that you will need in your armory every now and again. And it is worth getting used to the actual SDK and how it works. So, you know, don't be afraid to dive in there. It's it's well worth having a look at. And you, you'll probably find a few snippets of code in there that will help you. So uh, it's a useful thing to have in your armory. But anyway, I'm going to quit Safari and we'll go back to Cinema 4D and start work. 
and we're ready to go again. To finish off then, all we need is one line of code in here. And we can say rotation is equal to c4d.utils.hpb2 matrix brackets vect comma 5. And then all we need to say down in this line here is ma bracket 6 multiplied equals rotation and then we should be able to hit execute and as we can see we're now rotating diagonally through two axes the x and the z axes are being used the y is being used of course but we haven't changed it i said i'd leave it at zero if i put a, a value in there say just six or something you can see that it's rotated around its y-axis as well as the other two now but we'll just leave that at zero so that it's more even and i've used minus 11 and 18 because i knew that it would give me a perfect diagonal motion along the x and axis i mean you can always change these if you say 11 in there and minus 18 it will go in the opposite direction and now it's facing the other way Along the, along the same two axes. So you can play around with this and do stuff like that. But anyway, that is what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. Uh, so I hope it's been of use to you and you've learned a little bit more about the matrix array and you understand how rotation works. So you, you can see there are two very distinct methods. So these, if you only want to use a single axis, and then this method here, if you want to use all three at the same time, okay? So it's a single value or a vector. That's essentially what we're doing here. You've got to feed the rotation a single value or a vector value uh, and, and via a matrix or an HPB to matrix. That's essentially the difference between the two. But anyway, that just about wraps up this tutorial. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. And if you have, then please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. And of course, leave a comment. And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please share the video because all of this good stuff helps to keep the channel moving in the right direction. But that's about it for this one. So I'll see you very shortly on the next tutorial.